our hymn books. We'll sing number 193 this morning. Number 193. As they're coming this morning, I just want to encourage you to rest in the Lord as you sing this morning. This time of year, I don't know about you, but it can sometimes it can get hectic and we can get tired and we can kind of lose the real purpose of this time of year. So I, I just encourage you this morning to set the busyness aside and focus on Christ this morning. We're going to sing a few of these uh, Christmas carols this morning. You sing them with joy in your heart unto the Lord. Number 193, angels from the realms of glory come and worship. Angels from the realms of glory. from our hearts this morning as we sing that last stanza. turn over this morning to number 218 number 218 or excuse me 219 number 219 this morning silent night holy night all is calm all is bright number 219 
as it said there, he is king Amen. this morning. Hallelujah for that. All right. You know, I was supposed to, I think I got things a little mixed up this morning. You can sit down again. <laughs> we'll stand again on the last one, but for now, let's have some birthdays and anniversaries and we'll let you sit for that. <laughs> okay, we got a number of birthdays to go through this morning. And uh, on the 17th today, we have Mason Holverson and uh, Rachel Atchison. On the 18th, we have Shay Gilbert. On the 19th, Jacob Feston and Bob Hackett. On the 20th, Lauren Lathram and Osiris Medlock, Waylon Souter, Brianna Helfrich, and Titus McCormick. That's a popular date, that 20th. The 21st, we have Ian Rice. And then on the 23rd, we finish up with John Hopper and Dustin Simons. So let's sing happy birthday to all these folks today. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. three anniversaries here. We'll start with Michael and Kristen Keim today. How many years, Michael? Twelve years. Twelve years. All right. <laughs> and then uh, here's a little awkward, but I have to announce my own. Uh, <laughs> myself and my wife, Sarah. Uh, ours is tomorrow, and that'll be 24 years for us. Not for my wife, but she has stayed with me all those years. Anyhow, we'll go to the 21st, and RJ, RJ and Audrey Boykin, where are you at this morning, RJ? I saw you. Way over there. 11 years for them. All right. Congratulations. All right, let's sing happy anniversary to all of these folks this morning. Happy anniversary to you, to Jesus be true. Well, it says here to send a card of encouragement to Jason and Desiree Waltice and their family, and it gives the address there. Other than that, I don't think we have a whole lot of announcements. I will say for the choir's sake that we're going to, we've been singing a lot lately, and we're going to give you a couple of three weeks break here, so we'll take, a, we won't have any practice the next three weeks. We may be singing in one of the services, but no practice, and we'll start fresh in 2024, all right? So... Enjoy some time with your family during these holidays. Okay, let's sing another carol this morning. We'll turn to number 201. Number 201. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Let's sing it out this morning. Number 201. Oh, come, all ye faithful. Stand together. When we get to that chorus, 
We'll start that on the soft side, okay? And through each one of those, get progressively louder and end with a joyful, oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord, this morning. On that third. Yay, Lord, we greet thee. some kind of singing that's good ain't it we're going to get into a lot of good singing today before we uh have prayer with each other in just a moment uh danny will have we're going to have prayer with each other and dismiss and use the bathroom get a drink whatever you need there in fellowship time and uh then danny will have scripture reading and then after that i want to say a few words to the church and then we'll start the giving uh, a, a, pro- a service today and um but I got a couple, three things I want to say. So, fellas, don't get anything going until after I've done, after the, after we kind of get everything settled back down. Okay? I'm so thankful you're here today. But I'm thankful God is here. Amen. Without God, this is all in vain. Amen. Boy, God's been good to us. And so, right now, I'd like to encourage you just, but, but kind of hang loose because we are still going to have Bible reading, and then I'll have a word or two. And the choir will be coming up. And, uh, and and just say a word or two, and then we're going to turn the choir loose, and they'll start just passing out cards and so forth. And I want to say, well, I'll wait that till later. Let's pray. You pray with somebody, and we're going to dismiss for a little bit, all right? Have a word of prayer with somebody. Pray with them.
way back to your seats. We're going to read 1 Corinthians 12 this morning. 1 Corinthians 12. And the choir can start heading on in. 1 Corinthians 12 this morning. First Corinthians 12 this morning. Would you stand, please? We'll find your place there and we'll read responsively through First Corinthians chapter 12. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the, whole, is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. To another, faith by the same Spirit, and to, and to another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? And if they were all one member, where were the body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. And those members of the body which we, which we think less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have one, the same care one for another. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, early teachers, after that miracles, in the gifts of healings, health, governments, and first of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all observe it. But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Thank you. You may be seated. For the, for the sake of those who may be visiting today, and you didn't know what's going on, I'm not preaching. You can say amen right there. This is, this is our annual giving Sunday and what we do. And I want to explain what's going on. As I said in Bible class this morning, the purpose of giving Sunday is to deepen our understanding of a God that's a God of giving. 
When I got saved, God gave me eternal life. I didn't buy it. I didn't merit it. I didn't earn it. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he, God so loved the world that he gave. God is a God of giving. And the purpose of this Giving Sunday is so that we might better understand and draw near to the heart of God to understand that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. So what, to start off with, by way, guys, there's seats over here, several seats on that side over there, just in case you want them. not trying to tell you where to sit, but there are seats over there. Um, what we do is, that what, what people would normally give in the offering, we ask them to uh, pray about who they would, God would want them to help, and maybe just some manner, or just an expression of love. And take the money they would have normally given in, in cash and put it in an envelope and put that person's name on it. And then they, they put it in a basket back here in whatever box. And it's given anonymously. The goal is for you or me and nobody to know who gave anybody what. And the reason for that is because God says to give in secret, number one. And there's a purpose in that. So that God gets the glory. It's a joy to me to think that last night many of you were sitting around your house praying and saying, Lord, who would you have me help today? You know, $10 in America nowadays ain't much money. But did you know just knowing somebody cares means a lot? So that's what's going on. Now, whether you've been going here a long time or you've been here just recently coming or you're just visiting, one of the things you need to really get a hold of is, can I handle it? If nobody gives me nothing. That's a test of spiritual maturity. Uh, when I was younger, I always looked forward to getting presents. Now, I, Karen asks what I want. I say, I don't know. I don't need nothing. And I don't need anything. But it's a joy for me to see people getting things. Just It's more about encouraging and loving each other than it is the substance of what we're giving. Another thing that happens is a lot of people bake goods. Now, I'm in on that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know that. Or they make handcrafted goods, whatever, and people just give out of their heart, out of their what God's given, and that's so. That's what this is all about. And uh, what's going to happen? These uh, folks are going to sing. Uh, while that's happening, a bunch, bunch of young men are going. Boy, you know what happened? Yeah, all my helpers here. are up here. Aren't they? <laughs> well, we just. Gonna, I may need some, Don. Do you need some men to help? Don't you probably? I may need some of you young men, some of you grown men. Jacob, I see you sitting out there. You can get over and help too. They need some help. Some of you guys in my family, please help them over here, help them. But another thing is they need help. Sometimes, I hate to admit this, but last night I was going down through there and I was praying. And I said, Karen, who's this? These folks I don't know that are going to church here. And that's a sorry thing to say, but it's just the honest truth. And and. But if you went here very long, you'd realize he don't know nobody. But don't feel bad. He don't know us. And we've been going here 20 years. <laughs> but you just read a very powerful chapter of how important you are. Yeah. That chapter you just read talks about how we each we need each other. We're, we're members of the body and that the eye is not more important than the ear and so forth. That we all have a use in the body of Christ. And one of the great joys I've had at this church over these 40 years now is watching God use different people in this church to do so many different things. And just the Holy Spirit of God moving. And it's a wonderful thing. So what we're going to do is, uh, before we do this, I, I want you to look at this. You, you can't hardly see it. How many knows that's, that is modern art? <laughs> no, this I get this kind of stuff pretty occasionally. And this envelope's been, they've drawn a bunch of stuff. I ain't got it all figured out. And it just has on the front. I don't know who this is from. I looked all over this thing. I cannot. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Giving anonymously. But they do not know how to spell my name. <laughs> they spelled it R-E-G-I. <laughs> but when I opened this up and I read what was inside, I tell you what. I had one of the greatest blessings of Christmas a man could ever get. And I don't know who this is from, but they gave it to me. And here's what it says. God gave grace to the thief whose heart was made hard. God gave grace to the soul by pornography scarred. God gave grace to the rebellious young wretch that I was. And he gave all this grace for the sake of his son. 
God gave grace to reach the highest of heights and grace to keep going through the darkest of nights. God gave grace when the days felt so lonely and drear. He gave grace and he showed me that he was always near. God has given me grace throughout all my life for the bad times, the good times, the laughter, the strife. God gave grace when he offered his son on a tree. Oh, such wonderful grace that saved a wretch like me. Oh, how far grace had to reach into the deepest, darkest night. Oh, how the battle must have raged. Oh, how long grace had to fight. But now he takes me as his own, and the battle, it has been won. The chief of sinners has been saved by the blood of God's dear son. I don't know who wrote that. But I want to tell you, I appreciate it. And then it says this, St. Reggie. <laughs> boy, oh boy. They don't know me very well, do they? And they wrote a reference down to this, the Hebrews 13, 24. And I looked it up. And it, it's where it teaches us to address to call each other saints and address the believers as saints. It says, The church has helped me so much, both spiritually and practically. Please never stop preaching against sin. God knows who you are. And God knows how much encouragement that gave me. And it may not look much like the rest of this world, but it means everything to me. Anyway, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you so much for the concept of giving. Lord, this world is nothing but a taker. It'll take everything from us and then laugh at us as it throws us in the ditch. Steal everything that's valuable from us. But God, you came. You didn't leave us to ourselves. And into this world, you gave your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, conceived of the Holy Ghost, born of a virgin. And Jesus, you, died, you lived and you died in our place for our sins. You rose from the dead. You gave yourself for us you gave us eternal life you have given us peace you have given us Lord a home in heaven someday you'll give us a new glorified body and God you're a God that gives Lord teach us in this church the concept of giving ourselves for Jesus sake I want to thank you, Lord, for all the people these many years who have given and given and given and given of themselves to labor in this church and in this ministry. God, I tell you, I appreciate it. God, is this note, this poem that was written there, Lord, Lord, you gave us grace. You've given me grace for the journey. You've given me more grace. God, there's so much you've given us wisdom. You've given us peace. You've given us understanding, given us your spirit, and oh God, given us your holy word, the Bible. And God, we want to praise you this morning and worship you. And God, you've just given us our cup, oh Lord, overflows. Lord, it runs over. God, I pray that you help us to humble ourselves and bow before the throne of grace in humble gratitude. For all that you've given us. Lord, you said in your word that every good gift cometh down from above, from the Father of lights, Lord, in whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. God, I want to thank you for being a God that gives. Help us to give to others in your blessed and holy name. Not for glory for ourselves, but for your sake. May we glorify you, Lord in the giving of our lives 
for the sake of other people. Lord, bless this good time now to these people's hearts. And Lord, if there's somebody here whom it seems that man has bypassed in the quietness of their soul today, God ministered to them that you know them and you gave your son and gave all that they really ever do need in Jesus Christ. Lord, allow us and teach us to be content with such things as we have and to know that it is honestly more blessed to give than it is to receive. Oh, God, how we thank you for this church. I don't know why you visit us like you have. I don't know, God. I really don't. Been left up to me, God, to collapse and fell. But, Lord, you have sustained this work. Now, Father, we have people listening online. And I pray, God, today that they will, Lord, just bask in the God of love today that loves to give. And, Lord, that they'll realize the things that you give are eternal. They're valuable. They're precious. And, Lord, they're not like the things of this world that deteriorate and fade away. God, thank you today for being so good to us. Bless the choirs they sing. God, help us as we are here today just to meditate on the goodness of God. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Uh, fellas, you may start just handing out whatever's back there, and they're going to sing. You just enjoy yourself and, and uh, have a good time in the Lord. Amen.
Okay, get Lonnie up there on that. Uh, I forgot to make an announcement. Huh? Oh, he's already up there. Right after church, we're having a baptism. So, we'll be going down to the tabernacle. The water has been run, and it's not heated. And we're going to, and uh, I'm glad he's able to call him my brother. Brother Will, would you just flag your hand over there? Got saved last Sunday night after church. And, uh, I want you to pray for he and his family and uh, encourage them in their growth for the Lord. But uh, I told him, I said, you sure picked a cold time to get baptized, but that's all right. Amen. So, so I, I'm really encouraging you stick around and go down. We'll do it real fast. We leave here, go straight down there, get in the tank, and we'll get in there. We won't keep too long because I promise you, once I get wet, it's going to happen fast. <laughs> All righty. But anyway, that's exciting. I'm glad on this day that we're having a baptism service. Amen. You, God save people anytime. And if you're here today and you've never been saved, I tell you, you get saved right where you're sitting. Amen. Bow your head before God and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, that he suffered and died for you and shed his blood. God will save you where you're sitting. Amen. Just let us know about it and get baptized. All right, Brother Glidden, where are you at? Or Brother Lonnie? I bet you anything you're doing is Star Bethlehem. You got it. I got it. I knew Brother Lonnie coming up here was getting on something a little more hillbillyish in the Ozark stuff. Hey, everybody, this is my favorite Christmas song, or at least one of them, Beautiful Star Bethlehem. Would you sing it out? Y'all, did, did they have a They don't have a copy. Y'all help them sing on the chorus and stuff, whatever, okay?
the ridge <laughs> and you guys we're going to do our quartet song okay complete indeed after this song okay we'll do, we'll do it again when your folks are here by us okay <laughs> Kind of a special, special. Got a bunch of guys going to sing a, a song to us, okay? But number 17, if you have this book in your pew, How Great Our Lord.
complete in thee. It's been re- written to several different tunes. We've got one we're just going to sing this morning. But I do trust you'll listen to the words. Despite us, it's not about us up here. It's about singing unto him. And the words to this hymn are, are wonderful. So I, I trust it will be a blessing to you this morning. All right. Complete in Thee, no work of mine May take, dear Lord, the place of Thine Thy blood has part and bought for me And I am now complete in Thee Yea, justified, O blessed thought And sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, And glorified I too shall be. Complete in thee, no more shall sin, Thy grace has conquered, reign within. Thy voice will bid the tempter flee, and I shall stand complete in Thee. Yea, justified, O blessed thought, and sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and glorified I too shall be. Complete in Thee, each one supplied, and no good thing to me denied. Since Thou my portion, Lord, wilt be, I ask no more, complete in Thee. Dear Savior, when before Thy bar all tribes and tongues assembled are, among the chosen will I be, at thy right hand, complete in thee. Yea, justified, O blessed thought, and sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood hath poured and bought for me, and glorified I too shall be. Complete in Thee, forever blessed, of all Thy fullness, Lord, possess. Thy praise throughout eternity, Thy love I'll sing, complete in Thee. Yea, justified, O blessed thought, and sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and glorified I too shall be. Boy, that's great, wasn't it? Yeah. Now you're talking about you talking about the Holy Spirit of God just blessing. Complete. That's come straight out of the Bible in him. And I'm glad that we are. I want you to get out a living by faith. And we're gonna fix this will be the next to the last song. The next song will be Joy to the World We'll Go Home With. Have you found out anything yet, Dave? We're, we're gonna go ahead with the baptism. All right. I think that'll be good. I think you made the right choice. Amen. He would want maybe some of his family to be here. But that's not, but you know, and I, I said that's a tough one. But I believe you're right, Will. I believe you're on target. Uh, number 49 in this hymn book, it's called Living by Faith. In this hymn book right here, y'all just have to do the best you can, okay? Hadn't they been a blessing today? Boy, I tell you, it's been good. If you're listening online and you're here today and you wonder what in the world is all this about, this is about the love of God. This is about what God can do in your life. Now we're going to sing this song together. I want everybody singing. 
If, you, if I see you not singing, I'll, I might come back and visit you. No, I won't. But when I started in the ministry, this song became a, a theme song to me because faith comes by hearing. We're saved by faith. And the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. And God began to teach me after I got saved that, Reggie, you're going to live by faith. Four times the Bible said, the just shall live by faith. If you wonder what's going on here at this church, we're trying to have a radical reach of people that they'd be saved and taken away from the world. Away from the world's way of doing everything. Under Christ. And uh, I'm so grateful. And I want to encourage you. Number one, if you're not saved, please turn your heart toward God today. You may not know a lot, but if you know you're a sinner and you know Christ died for you, that's all you need to know. Just turn your heart up to God and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Trust Him as your Savior. Receive Him as your Savior. Believe on Him. You can do that. But if you're saved, I want to encourage you about something. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. What we have here at this service is you cannot get this in the world. Oh, I know you can have your Miley Cyrus concerts. You can have your country music guys come in, but they don't have God what we got. This is the love of God. Shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Now I'm so thankful that the just shall live by faith. Let's sing it out. So when everybody get in help sing this morning. Here we go. I care not to evil's betide. Why should I then care? Though the tempest may blow, Jesus walks close to my side. Sing it out to the Lord and worship the Lord today. Here we go. Verse 3. I
God. Yes, sir. You need to get an apple on the way out. They got an apple for everybody. When you get to heaven, there'll be no worms in them. Amen. Amen. Well, Brother Glenn, now here's what's going to happen. They're going to sing joy to the world. And then uh, we're going to dismiss. I'm going straight down to the baptism deal down here at the tabernacle. We're going to have baptism. And then you can head out. But I encourage you to come and encourage this man that was saved Sunday night. All right, Brother Glidden, where are you? There you are right there. Everybody sing. And let's rejoice. In here but I, I just want to say thank you to everybody for every card every Amen. gift everything anybody gave to Karen and I all right I want to tell you we appreciate it I won't get to look at the cards till I get home tonight probably but I'm going to take my time and enjoy them amen and all of that well I thank everybody for everything all right well thank you all for being here today I trust that this up here what you see up here is for the glory of the Lord amen. and you know we just we do our best. We're not trying to be professional or anything, but I just, I'm so thankful for these young people. They want to sing unto the Lord. And, you know, I don't want to puff them up or anything, but it's hard to find this today where you have young people who want. I don't have to coerce any of them. They, I don't know, maybe their parents do. I don't know, but uh, I don't. They just come up here, and I can see from their faces that they're singing from their hearts. So let's all sing together as we close this morning. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. You sing it from your hearts with all your might this morning. All right? On the first. Joy to the world. Just lift that up this morning as we think about think about that this morning I don't think that's very far away as Pastor Rich has been preaching we it may happen in our lifetime and so that ought to bring just a thrill to our hearts that in this evil day that we live in Jesus is still in control he's ruling he's gonna rule and reign and he's gonna put all evil down and so let's sing it at the top of our lungs this morning if you can with all our might unto our Lord and Savior this morning, yes. Now, verse number four. He is